personality. <laughs> nice uh, haircut. I usually shake out the hips first. Honesty and passion. The hips. Eyes. The eyes. His hands. Um, His height. Lip, lips. Hips, hips. Um, Her humor. And the smile. The curve. Charisma. Yeah, energy. And the smile. Smile. Her lips. Her mouth. Her, Her eyes. eyes. The face. Her humor. Uh, and the hair. The whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> what makes us drawn to a particular person? Well, if you ask that question to a thousand people, you may get a thousand different answers. But being in love is actually one of the strongest feelings possible. And even though we typically think of love being in our heart, the chemistry of love has actually a lot more to do with this, our brain. Our brain. And the reason we start to act all funny when we find someone special can actually be explained chemically. Let's look at three different molecules that play a big role in human attraction. Adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. If you've ever wondered why people act so goofy when they bump into someone they're attracted to, it's not entirely their fault. When this happens, adrenaline is released in the body by signals from the brain. This is actually the body activating a stress response and we feel our heart rate increase and we begin to sweat. Even if sweating may not be something we really wish to do when trying to impress someone we like. Well, another molecule related to adrenaline is dopamine, a natural feel-good substance released in the brain as we fall in love. Dopamine is the reward molecule. It makes us want to repeat things that have made us feel good. But high dopamine concentrations are also connected to focused attention, obsessive thinking, sleeplessness, and loss of appetite. Does this sound familiar? When we fall in love, there seems not to be a thing in the world that could bring us down. Life is just great, and we can't stop thinking of that special one. Well, we can partly thank our third chemical for that, serotonin. But what is really happening in our body when these molecules are released? Well, I know just the person to ask. I'm meeting up with Andrew Ewing, who is a professor in analytical chemistry. These molecules, dopamine, serotonin and adrenaline, they're, they're neurotransmitters in the brain. Neurotransmitters are molecules that signal between two nerve cells, whether it's in the brain or in the Nervous, nerve system in the body. When a nerve signal is sent in the body, the neurotransmitters transfer the signal across small gaps between the nerve cells. Neurotransmitters then have specific receptors on the receiving nerve cells, making sure that only the right nerve signal is passed on. Kind of like a lock and key. Only the right key will open the right door and continue the signal. But what really happens in our body when we fall in love? Well, that's when you, your brain sends all the signals to your body for you to for action and so that's why you have the adrenaline rush adrenaline comes out and your palms get sweaty and and uh, your heart rate increases you get tunnel vision you zero in on that person that's who you're looking at uh, and then after a little while then you get this euphoria and that's serotonin and then and that's also rewarding and so you get some dopamine involved although it's probably more a time again reward with dopamine well, it turns out that the effect of these little chemicals in our brain could be so strong that some scientists even recommend that we avoid making big decisions during this stage. We could be acting under the influence of love chemicals. But these molecules are not just important in explaining why we act and feel the way we do when we fall in love. They also provide insight in many other physiological effects. A rapid increase in adrenaline, for example, is our body's way to prepare for a fight or flight situation. That is why our heart rate increases and we feel knee weak when doing something scary. Hey, falling in love is pretty scary, isn't it? Understanding the effects of adrenaline has now led to its use in treating severe allergic reactions, asthma and restoring the heartbeat of patients suffering cardiac arrest. And understanding the biochemistry of dopamine has improved treatment methods for diseases, such as Parkinson's disease. The discovery of dopamine's role as a neurotransmitter gave Arvid Karlsson from Gothenburg in Sweden the Nobel Prize in 2000. 
And get this, serotonin has now been used to help treat, for example, depression. Well, even though chemistry might not explain why we fall in love, we've learned that being in love depends a lot more on chemistry than you may have thought. So we have seen how the molecules of love have a lot more to do with this than this. And understanding how these molecules work in the brain is helping scientists in many ways, such as treating certain diseases. And remember, chemistry is all around you.